These kind of shots and this kind of action are the cornerstones of what makes Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse one of, if not the best, superhero film ever made. However, I'm not here to pitch that opinion today. Instead, I'm character studied, and I'm going to deconstruct one key moment that I believe defines Miles Morales as Spider-Man. And no, it's not this, or this, or even this moment. I believe the moment that Miles Morales is ready to accept his role as Spider-Man is right here, in his bedroom, tied to a chair, being forced to listen. Now, let me explain. Throughout the film, from the beginning of the second act, Miles is locked between three father figures. Aaron Davis, his uncle who sees the potential in Miles' artistic expression and pushes him to achieve greatness despite secretly being an underworld henchman. Jefferson Davis, his father who wants Miles to succeed in life on his terms and refuses to budge on his beliefs even if the situation requires it. And Peter Parker, a selfless hero who died while entrusting a crucial mission to Miles which becomes the driving force of the film. All three of these figures are expanded upon and given layered depth as the second act progresses, and I'll explain how before getting back to how all three help Miles realize his true potential in this scene. Without further ado, let's start with Miles' biological father. Jefferson Davis At the beginning of the film, Jefferson is the one to interrupt Miles' sketching and music, two creative outlets revisited frequently throughout the film, immediately establishing him as an authoritarian figure first and a father who wants to foster creativity second. The ride to school is the first real conversation that Miles has in the movie, and it quickly establishes the relationship between these two characters and Aaron. Miles is initially very bored with the car ride and finds it incredibly disinteresting, while Jefferson attempts to connect with his son. The first emotional response Jefferson shows is a strong resentment to Spider-Man and the acts of vigilantism he commits. This is an indication of the previous relationship Miles and Jefferson have had before the events of the film. Jefferson is so afraid of Miles becoming like his uncle that Jefferson became steadfast in his beliefs, that the law should be followed and upheld, eventually becoming an officer of the law. You can see in the way he looks at Miles after he brings up his uncle that he fears Miles will follow the example set by Aaron, first with the graffiti and low-level crimes before escalating to a henchman like his brother did. This conversation ends with Jefferson telling Miles he loves him and refusing to leave until Miles reciprocates the action, an important detail for later. From this point, Jefferson is the first person Miles turns to when thrust upon with great power and great responsibility that comes with it. And knowing that nothing he can say will help, which forces the mother of Rio to intervene and say the words Miles needs to hear in that moment. This is important because the only other time throughout the film that Jefferson's steadfast beliefs buckles when he calls Aaron, noticeably with Rio by his side, to ask if he's seen Miles around, because of the care Jefferson has for him. This, this relationship between father and son builds to this scene, which we'll come back to after we talk about Aaron Davis. At the beginning of the film, Miles and Aaron have a close relationship, stemming from the support and encouragement Aaron gives Miles with his art and other fatherly advice. Hey. But Aaron also instigates the events that lead to Miles being bitten by the spider and being caught up in the fight that results in the death of Peter Parker. The former occurs when Aaron brings Miles to a fresh wall and has him unleash his recent artistic musings on it. Miles creates a drawing depicting how he feels small in the presence of all the responsibilities placed on him by his father. So, in this one action it is shown how Miles feels, torn between his father's expectations and his artistic desires that Aaron fosters. Aaron even picks up on this. Miles, I see exactly what you're doing, Aaron. And before he can encourage Miles further, his dark secrets call him away. It's at this moment that the spider bites Miles and he gains his abilities. The next evening, Miles seeks answers and is beset upon by Peter. More on that later. After that unfortunate event, Miles is chased by the Prowler, unaware that he is the same man who introduced him to the location and who he thinks cares about him. Miles doesn't attempt to contact Aaron again until he makes a fool of himself in front of Peter B and feels too ashamed at his recent vigilante activity to return to his father. So Miles skulks back to Aaron's apartment and writes him a note talking about how much he wants the guidance and assurance Aaron provides for him. This is followed immediately by the entrance of the Prowler and the revelation that he and Aaron are one and the same. This reveal is a big moment for Miles, as the kind, caring, and slightly goofy family member who believed in his creative potential is revealed to be a hired killer for the biggest crime lord in New York. This is followed by a literal and figurative scene of Miles running away from his uncle. The chase itself ironically ends with Miles believing he's escaped his uncle and the hard truth about him until he retreats to the other spiders, only for the truth and the Prowler himself to come crashing through the front door. This fight escalates to the point of Aaron discovering Miles' identity and the subsequent reveal that he cares for Miles' life more than his own as he releases Miles before being fatally wounded. 
Miles rushes Aaron to a nearby alley to give the pair a final moment without masks in order for Miles to apologise for failing the man who believed in him. Aaron denies his apology and admits that he wasn't a good man, going as far as to tell Miles that I'm sorry. I wanted you to look up to me. Showcasing his regret and embarrassment that Miles discovered his uncle's secret. Miles lets out a stream of tears and Aaron tells Miles that You're the best of all of us, Miles. You're on your way. Just... Just keep going. But before he gets the chance, Jefferson arrives and attempts to arrest Miles, shaming him into turning invisible and leaving the seat. This leads to Miles returning back to his apartment, only to be met with... Peter Parker. Peter Parker is initially the perfect iteration of the character, as he is happy with his life, his status as a hero, and his identity as the only Spider-Man. However, the first time he meets Miles, he expresses an understanding Miles was lacking in regard to his new powers. Peter promises to train him and take him under his wing, which Miles gratefully accepts. Once the accelerator explodes, however, the pair are only left with a few moments to talk. Peter gives Miles all the main points of being a hero before encouraging him to leave, which Miles, being a scared kid, agrees with. He then witnesses Peter die and spends a significant part of the early film attempting to honour Peter, only to fail his self-training due to his lack of self-confidence. This relationship between Peter and Miles has expanded upon when Miles meets what Peter could have become had he lived and grown a little more than the Chris Pine Peter we meet at the beginning of the film. This Peter is a character I'll come back to as the series progresses, but for now, I'll just briefly mention how initially he is hesitant to train Miles and leaves him out of all the plans he makes. It's only when Miles shows initiative and a desire to keep him safe does Peter begin to take Miles' side and actively defend him against the other spiders. This is what makes the moment directly before Miles becoming Spider-Man so painful. In one moment, Miles appears to be the reason his uncle died, a disappointment to Peter B. Parker, and what his father hates most of all, a reckless and dangerous vigilante whose actions gets people hurt. Miles retreats back to his apartment and immediately trashes the place in anger, even throwing a textbook out the window. His outburst is then literally and figuratively thrown back in his face, when the spiders attempt to comfort him and explain that they've all been where he is now. But Miles is still too frustrated, too embarrassed. So he insists on being the one to You gotta make Kingpin pay! You have to let me make him pay! But Peter sees his anger and notes that Miles isn't ready. This hurts him even more, and Miles refuses to miss an opportunity to make up for his failings. Peter then forcibly takes the goober from Miles and ties him to a chair. He leaves Miles with the only way he'll know he's ready to be Spider-Man, which is... It's a leap of faith. That's all it is, Miles. A leap of faith. Acceptance. Which brings me back to this scene. The climax of the second act and the beginning of the third. This is the moment where Miles accepts the lessons of all three of his father figures and adds his own personal flair to those lessons, becoming, as Aaron previously stated, the best of all of us. Miles sits for a moment with the death of one of his father figures and the rejection of another. He sits with this until he decides he's ready to use his frustration of his failure to save Aaron and to be accepted by the other spiders to break out of the webbing he's encased in. He fails because he still feels like he's not good enough. His failure and feeling of letting down who he felt was the only person who truly had his back causes him to doubt himself, and in doing so, prevents him from accessing his powers and escaping. It's at this moment when his third and most important father figure, Jefferson, arrives. And how does Miles react? He stops. Not because he's afraid of his father learning of his newfound powers, but because he's afraid of talking to the only father he has left. That's why when Jefferson pushes Miles to open the door, Miles doesn't seem upset, because there's nothing he could do in this situation. It's only after Jefferson asks if they can talk for a second that Miles seems hurt. Both in part because he feels like a failure for not being physically able to chat, and because he knows what Jefferson is about to say. However, he doesn't. Jefferson starts the conversation with his supposed reasoning for visiting Miles, Aaron is gone. But he then changes the point of the conversation to how he desires to grow closer to Miles and be more engaged in his life. Maybe due to the fact that he understands how close Miles and Aaron were and how his absence will affect Miles. Or maybe because he doesn't want to lose his son as a stranger the way he lost his brother. Either way, the filming in this shot starts with two disjointed shots, as one is a wide profile shot of Jefferson in the hallway, while Miles is treated to a medium shot with him in the corner, perhaps suggesting he wants to hide from the conversation he believes Jefferson wants to have. Once Jefferson changes topics and starts talking to Miles about how he wants to grow closer, however, 
Both him and Miles have matching shots of a close-up zooming into their faces. From there, Jefferson breaks down his own failings as a father and admits to Miles he's not perfect, and he understands that, but he encourages Miles to use his own unique gifts and talents, or... I see this, this spark in you, it, it's amazing! ...and tells him that whatever he does with it, it will be his and it will be great. Both characters then lean into the door, being as close as they can be under the circumstances, with Jefferson crossing the halfway line of the screen symbolizing his crossing into a compromise between his way of life and Miles developing attitude as a hero. The moment then ends with Jefferson reminding Miles that he is loved before leaving. In a visual sense, this displays Jefferson moving on because he said all he came to say, with Miles hanging by the door for a moment to process everything that was said. It's after this beat, this moment of calm that had been lacking since the death of Aaron, that Miles is able to channel the spark within him that Jefferson hinted towards and break free of his largely self-made prison. The moment is then emphasised with Miles' first control camouflage and subsequent donning of his own costume through the wonderful Leap of Faith scene. It's also during this leap that Miles hears all three of his father figures' voices echo through his mind right before he takes that leap. And once again, this is the moment where Miles becomes Spider-Man. Not through leaping off the building in his own costume, but by being forced to listen to the voices of his father figures as they all bestow upon the wisdom that he couldn't have gained anywhere else. Thank you for watching. My name is Character Studied, and if you have anything you'd like to add or contribute to the discussion, the comments are right there down the bottom. You know exactly where they are. And thank you for watching this video.